Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's episode of Forgotten Fairy Tales. I know it's a little later than it has been in past weeks. I've been kind of busy, but I do have a story for everyone. It's an Aztec legend, actually. Um, I don't know a whole lot of Mexican mythology, which is kind of why I sought this one out. Um, but it's a romantic, star-crossed lover sort of thing from the Aztecs. The story of, and forgive me, I'm going to probably butcher pronunciations here, but it's um, Pocapotepel and Iztacatuli. Um, so this takes place a long time ago, um, in the area of Mexico City, actually. Um, and there are two, it's the story of these two gigantic volcanoes, by those names, in fact, there, and how they got to be there. So, back during the height of the Aztec Empire, and it dominated the whole valley of Mexico. Um, it was common pra practice, of course, that neighbor neighboring towns would require would have to give a tax. Um, often, in fact, human sacrifice. Um, now, the chief of the Taxacaltecas, um, who were bitter en enemies of the Aztecs, got sick of this t oppression, and he decided to fight for his people's f freedom. Now, he had a daughter, Iztacatuli, um, who was the most beautiful of all the princesses, who had professed her love for young Pocapotepo, um, one of her father's people's greatest and most beautiful warriors. Um, in fact, they had a huge, deep love for each other. And bef um, Before he went off to war against the Aztecs, Pocapotepo asked the chief for the to if he could for permission to marry Iztacatuli. Um, now the chief, because this was what his greatest warrior, the man was very handsome, it was very appropriate. So he he was happy to to agree and promised that they'd have a giant celebration when the warriors returned, and he would give his daughter's hand to Pocat Pop Popocatepel in marriage, if he came back victorious, of course. The warrior accepted, prepared everything, and left. Keeping in his heart his prom the promise that the princess would be waiting for him so that they could become married. Now, not long after Pocatepel left, a love rival of his, who was jealous of the love they had for each other, told Iztacatuli that her beloved had died in the battle. Iztacatuli was crushed by this, and in, in that sadness she died without even imagining she had been lied to. Now, Pope Temple returned victorious to his people, only to find that she had died. He himself, of course, was dev devastated. He wandered the streets for several days and nights until he decided you know, to do something to honor her love and to ensure the princess would never be forgotten. So he ordered a great tomb built on under the sun, pulling up ten hills to form a huge mountain. He carried the dead princess in his arms and took her to the summit and laid her on the great mountain. The young warriors loving, you know, lovingly kissed her lips, took a small smoking branch and knelt in front of his beloved to watch over her eternal sleep. From then on, they continued together, facing each other. Eventually, the smoke would cover their bodies, forming two majestic volcanoes that would remain joined until the end of time. Um, and there's a variation in the story, apparently, that says that one of the other that the scorned lover is one of the other mountains in the area that all he's able to do is to watch the two of them for all eternity. Um, but Capitepel's volcano, as I understand it. The largest active volcano, and Iztacatulis are the largest active ones in the hemisphere. Um, yeah, the the liar became the mountain Pico de Orizaba, um, another of the volcanoes, and now from afar he watches the eternal dream of the two lovers, never again to be separated. Now this story, yeah, it goes back to the Aztec Empire, um, 14th century, and yeah, it's very important. It's why those mount those two volcanoes have those names. Um, 
It's an interesting story to me. Um, clearly, there are plenty of European stories about um, star-crossed lovers and things of that nature. Um, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, one that I prefer more and I plan on doing is a story around Valentine's Day, which is Tristan and Isolde um, from Arthurian mythology. Um, but there, I guess there's and there's some Native American legends and thing you know the running bear and the white dove um, but you know lo people who loved each other who just then it's not meant to be um, of course this is very different in that it wasn't you know it wasn't a forbidden love it wasn't a, um love of two warring peoples it was just one jealous man screwing the whole thing up um but that's it it's a little short i know but i hopefully everybody liked it um i will have a new story this week and for until then uh have a good night as always please like comment and subscribe and tune in at eight o'clock eastern standard time sunday nights for the live show of paranormal encyclopedia until then good night